Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. All right, it is hump day, middle of the week. It is Wednesday, and it's been actually kind of a quiet day as far as the Dallas Cowboys are concerned. The thing that's been interesting, it seems like every other day we've heard some different news about Bobby Wagner. Um, I know, of course, we heard Stephen Jones basically say that we're out on the Bobby Wagner situation, but it seems like every other day it's been like from the Rams to you know them wanting him and stuff, and then all of a sudden to the Ravens and then back to the Rams or interested again. So by tomorrow, I expect him to be doing another visit. Of course, Stephen Jones says, we're good. We don't need to add anybody there. We're okay. But before I get on to us being literally... Yes, us Dallas Cowboy fans being held to the whim of a madman. I actually have to get on to something else right now that, that's kind of kind of really kind of crazy. Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis wants some change. He literally is changing again. Jordan Lewis literally is going from the number 26 to the number 2. That's right. He is going to be number 2 from 26. Um, I think he's changed his number quite a few times but you know i guess he's saying hey i want to be number two i'm going to be the number two defender in the secondary for the dallas cowboys and in a position where i don't believe the cowboys are going to be looking at the secondary this year but then again who knows what the cowboys are looking at you would think that with all the work that's been going on on the defensive line that the dallas cowboys of course would be uh, excuse me, on the defense, that the Dallas Cowboys would be going for offensive line since they haven't addressed anything here. But here's the thing that's kind of crazy, though, as we start to think about this. You know, at first we were told that we got to go ahead and we got to get Michael Gallup signed because we could lose him. We could lose him. And that there wasn't enough money to pay him and Amari Cooper, even though you could have technically restructured his contract in the $6 million that you're paying Right now, for him to be gone, you could have actually been paying just that for him to be here. And when you consider that Cedric Wilson, who played an integral part last year, as well as Amari Cooper, and now that we're hearing the, the lie that's kind of story is beginning to change, that, oh, well, you know, Amari, he, he'll probably miss like two or three games. Do you have confidence in the Cowboys actually having him only miss two or three games? The fact that they're already saying that he's going to miss two or three games, to me, <laughs> be prepared for him to be gone half the season. I'm just saying, when you hear the Cowboys, they always give you the best case scenario. They sugarcoat everything. You know, like, we can't take the truth. They think we can't handle the truth. But in actuality, I would rather you tell me the truth so I know what to expect as opposed to everything being sugar plums. Because... Shout out to Cam Billings, who shared this uh, tweet from Law Nation. First of all, look at that face. Isn't that the bitter beer face? Doesn't it? Doesn't it look like the bitter beer face? How are you better with be lesser there? players? Theoretically, uh, you know, you you don't have Amari. Last year, you told us this receiving core was as good as any in the league. Right. With, with those, kind of the big three, and then you add what Cedric has done. You lose Cedric and Amari. That hurts. You... Yeah. I mean, we have to get better. I mean, we're going to have to find ways to, to be better uh, without those two players. And we got to have guys uh, step up. Obviously, Gallup missed a lot of time last year. Uh, you know, I think he'll come back uh, recovered. He may miss two or three games there at the beginning, but we're going to have to uh, uh, draft well and have some guys step up, uh, you know, even more so as uh, we move forward. But, you know, unfortunately, you can't. Keep, right. We knew we weren't going to be able to keep everybody, and, and there's no question. Amari Cooper is a great football player. Would we love, would we love to keep him? Would, we'd love to keep him, but we just, uh, you know, didn't have the, the cap space to do both Gallup and Amari. But even with, in defense with Gregory, you wanted to keep Gregory. He was part of. To a point, we wanted to keep Gregory. Okay. To a point, we wanted to keep Gregory. So, wait, 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 hold it. So, Randy Gregory, you let go to Denver. 
and you waited till after he already had another deal, and and, and you say, well, we we wanted to. Then why then why didn't you just let him go? <sighs> this is where you feel like you are being given a whole lot of BS, because as they put it also too, that they feel that their linebacking core is good enough. That bringing back Van Der Esch, having Luke Gifford, having Micah Parsons, um, and Jabril Cox. They're letting you know, we are looking for a lot from Jabril Cox. Again, Jabril Cox may be perfect. He, he may end up you know, coming around and, and having a season like Diggs, for all we know. And maybe they're seeing a lot of things that we're not. But the fact that we are banking our season on guys that are coming from ACL tears kind of worries me a little bit. I, I mean, I, I get it. I get it that it's not like, you know, back in the day, you know, when I played football, you know, when they were just beginning to come out with the scope and, and things and work with it and stuff, that guys recover quicker. And Jabril Cox has a few more months to recover than Michael Gallup. But the reality is it still takes about a year to really recover from having ACL surgery. And you can't expect a guy to be coming in. If, if we're talking about Michael Gallup now saying, you know, he's not going to be coming in until, you know, missing two or three games. What that says to me is you're missing all the OTAs. You're missing all of the training camp. You're having to come in after week two or three. And, and are you saying that you're going to be completely healthy at that point? You're probably not going to be. And the fact that we've lost Amari Cooper and you tell us that we didn't have the money to, and you lost Cedric Wilson because we didn't have the money to, right now we're kind of middle of the pack with cash that's still there. And you could have kept them if you wanted them to. And back to this whole thing of Jabril Cox. I hope I hope that Stephen Jones is right, that Jabril Cox is going to have a hell of a season, but we're banking a lot of stuff on guys that aren't quite there. And that kind of worries me quite a bit. You know, this is where you kind of say, you know what? We've been frugal this year. We've saved some money. You know, if we, we want some money, then maybe we go ahead and we get a deal done with Blake Jarwin, right? Instead of paying him a hard $10.8 million, you know, maybe we get a two- or three-year deal and um, get that number down some. Or maybe we go through and, you know, we restructure a couple of little contracts just a little bit. You know, maybe you go with Anthony Brown or, you know, maybe you bite the bullet and say we've already in – for a boatload of money for Zeke Elliott. Let's go ahead and do this and, you know, let's take a chance. Let's take a chance with Zeke and do a little restructuring and get the money to pay, you know, Bobby Wagner or, or somebody else to try and say, let's try and see if we can get over the hump. Because at best case, the Cowboys are planning to have just enough, just enough that they think we can compete. Well, I got to tell you, you don't want to be on a flight where they say we have just enough fuel to make it to our destination and then find out you got a headwind that's coming at you that's pushing the plane back. And now all of a sudden, when we thought we had enough gas to get there, we ain't got enough because we have to burn extra fuel fighting that headwind. And that, of course, has been the Dallas Cowboys' history for the last 26 years. They're not willing to change and take risks, and they continue to try and do everything the same way that they've been doing forever when the dynamics have changed. Hate to say it, but the Cowboys, they're stuck in the past. And until they get up to speed in the current, we're going to have quite a few problems. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, you know how we roll. Thank you for coming in, and...
you're kidding me. I don't get a record. Oh, fuck. Thank <laughs> you.